Hello everyone, it's Fred again from Notes of a Nomad, video number 211. Today I want to ask you, how old are you? And what does it really matter? Well, I was listening to a Canadian Broadcasting Corporation program recently where they were talking about ageism, people being discriminated against at different ages. And this was prompted by the fact that two gentlemen by the name of Joe Biden and Donald Trump are likely to be the candidates in the forthcoming United States election. And they're likely to be the oldest ever candidates. And people were discussing this and the impact of that. And so let's talk about what is ageism and how it impacts us. So let's uh, show you a couple screenshots that I have in that regard. And, you know, Ageism refers to the fact that we have stereotypes and we feel maybe prejudice against uh, people based on their age, young and old. Like we might think the older people, well, what do they really know what's going on? They're not as intelligent anymore. They're not cooperative. Maybe, you know, we, we shouldn't even listen to that. Or the younger people, what do they know? You know, oh, we don't even take them seriously. Yet, there's some great examples of people around the world who have done some outstanding things in their in their careers at an elderly and younger ages. So there's an example of a chart that was uh, recently produced showing that there's a high prevalence of ageism in some countries, those are the darker countries, and the lighter countries, there's less ageism, but there is ageism all around the world. But by embracing people of all ages, we can create a richer society. And some examples of what uh, we are, we have are, for example, let's talk about Grandma Moses. This lady at the age of 78 started her folk uh, art uh, painting and became very famous at an elderly age. Another individual we've probably all heard about is Nelson Mandela. At the age of 75, he became the first black prime minister and went on to have a big impact on the world with his approach to, um, you know, forgiving and, and working with people who, in fact, they were, you know, during the apartheid time and it could have been a disaster, but his approach was very positive and he made a big impact around the world. Uh, another lady was Jane Goodell, who originally did a lot of research on chimpanzees in Tanzania, but went on to become a world-renowned environmentalist. And another individual who we probably all know about was Colonel Saunders, who started Kentucky Fried Chicken in his 60s. So we've all heard about these individuals, I'm sure. Younger people like Greta Thunberg, who at the relatively young age, I think she was 11 or 12, became a very powerful climate activist. And that was, you know, a more than a decade ago. And look at what's happening with climate change now. But she was one of the early pioneers in having uh, people being activists and young people in, in particular. And another young individual is Malala Yousafzai, who is a human uh, activist, human rights activist for education, and is the youngest ever Nobel Prize winner. So those are some examples of older and younger people who've done things. I remember uh, one example when I was a headhunter recruiter. I had an excellent candidate. He was looking for a sales manager's job, and he was very accomplished. In fact, he was uh, even accomplished in martial arts. He was outstanding. And I looked at him and said, he looks like a very fit astronaut. However, he was, you know, nearing 60 years of age. And most people wouldn't even talk to him. Meanwhile, he would probably outproduce most of the candidates. So there was an example that I came across. What an outstanding individual. But ageism was affecting him. Uh, and another example where I've been experienced recently is intergenerational. This is wonderful when you can have the diversity of older and younger people working together and accomplishing things. In AgriSpeakers, 
we've had clubs where and meetings where we've had young people and their teenagers and older people as old as me in their 80s working together and saying we're learning from each other. This is fantastic. This is outstanding example of intergenerational connection. And you know, there are companies who ignore people of different ages and yet diversity and bringing their different perspectives is very powerful and can make companies and organizations much more effective. So we can make the world a better place if we look and make positive change. And this is one of them we can do if we judge people by their strengths and not by their age. So that is something that I've learned over the years. And I think we all are can be impacted by how old are you, which really shouldn't matter that much. And as an aside, I'm now in California. This past week, I moved from my daughters and her family in Melbourne, Australia. I came, uh, flew actually to Honolulu. It was a 10-hour flight and another five-hour flight to from Honolulu to San Francisco and then a short flight, an hour and a half from San Francisco to here in Southern California, where I am with my daughter and her family here. Uh, in fact, I noted on the airplane, on the uh, plane, there was a, uh, the short flight, there was an elderly uh, um, flight attendant, and she was looking after the people in business class. She was probably more active than any flight attendant normally that I saw, because this was a small plane, and she was serving them their drinks and their food, et cetera. And it was wonderful. She was probably more active and more competent than the average uh, flight attendant. So there was an example of someone who is doing an outstanding job at an older age than you would expect. Now here I'm looking forward to, there's a rowing machine I can row. I've been rowing the last few days. I can use the rowing machine that they have here on at home. And I'm looking forward to the great All-American Youth Circus show, which will be held in May. And I'm looking forward to seeing that once again. It's been two years since I last was here. So I'm looking forward to staying here and seeing that. And then I'll be returning to Canada in early May. So with that, I'll say, how old are you? Doesn't really matter. It shouldn't matter anyway. So with that, au revoir. Bye for now. Till next time. Fred and Notes of a Nomad.